Hi guys, my name is Roger, and ever since I was a teenager, I've always wanted to build my own car. I started this channel to see if an average person, like me, can design and build their own mid-engine car. If you like what you see here in my videos, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you know someone who you think might be interested in my videos, please share the videos with them. I'll be adding a new video every week, and with that out of the way, let's get started with this week's video.
So it took a little time this morning and cleaned up. It was getting terrible. I couldn't walk. I couldn't find tools. So cleaned up all my tools and swept. I even found a jug of motor oil that I had bought to go in the engine here. So uh, I was getting ready to buy engine oil here soon. I'm glad I spotted this because that'll save me from buying twice as much as I need. I uh, wanted to show you something right quick before I uh, start working again. I've been wiring up uh, a uh, like an ignition switch and a starter button for just for temporary use to uh, start the engine up and drive the car around. And this is what I found. I found this on the internet. I've mounted it here just temporarily. And this is a master switch, so this would be like the key on the car. When you flip the switch on, the light comes on showing you that everything is powered up. This powers up the digital dash and the ECU. And this is the starter button. I have the wire ran to the starter, uh, just to the solenoid. It'll um, engage the starter, but there's no power wire running to it. You can hear it, but without the power wire, it's not actually turning over the engine. I don't have engine oil in the engine yet, so I don't want to spin it over. I did connect the wire yesterday and just barely bumped it just so the engine would move and it did barely move. So, uh, when I get, I'm waiting on ends, this is my starter wire, and I don't have the actual right size ends, I just stuck some uh, audio ends on it here, just temporarily, just to bump the starter and make sure that the engine moved. And I have ends ordered, once those come in, we will put that starter wire on. The next thing I'm going to do is I have drilled the hole here for the, uh, weld in bung for the O2 sensor and I'm going to remove that pipe clean it up and try to weld that bung in for the O2 sensor and then we can install the O2 sensor and wire it
I want to show you a couple things that I just finished working on. I stopped by today and picked up some fluids. I, uh, I got some power steering fluid and I filled the reservoir up. Though once it starts pumping fluid through the lines and up to the front rack, steering rack, I'm sure it'll need some more fluid added. Maybe quite a lot of fluid. I bought two bottles to be safe. I also picked up one more uh, a bottle of engine oil and I removed the oil filter, filled it full of oil, removed the, uh, there's a plug in the side of the engine that accesses the oil pump, removed the plug, poured as much oil into the oil pump as I could to prime it, put the plug back in, and then uh, cycled the engine through several turns. Uh, I actually had my wife help me. She was holding the uh, start button while I was looking through the hole here at this back, uh, rocker arm just to see if oil did come out the hole. Uh, it took several turns on the engine, but after, you know, 15 or 20 seconds or so of trying to start the engine or turning the engine over, uh, the oil, I could see the oil come out the hole. So the engine is primed. It has oil in it now. And um, I also put the fuel pump in and it's bolted in solid and plumbed up correctly. I'm waiting on a relay wire this up I am not supposed to run over I think it was 10 amps through this wire here through the ECU and this pump they said use a 40 amp relay so I'm waiting on that relay and the wiring harness to come in to wire up the fuel pump uh, since there's no fuel in the tanks and no fuel pump we can turn the engine over and what I have here I purchased this this is a master switch you can see it lights up showing me this will be the same thing as putting the key in the car it powers up everything the digital dash comes on the ecu is on and then we can push this button here and rotate the engine through a few cycles so that's interesting at least the starter is wired correctly and it works i'm waiting on one more wire to come in this is a wiring harness for the alternator, and I'll use one of these. I'm not sure. I think I need the one with the resistor. Uh, whichever one I don't use, I'll send back. But basically, this is the exciter wire that goes to the alternator, and then there is a wiring harness from the alternator to the positive side of the battery. And this exciter wire just tells the alternator if the voltage is getting low and it needs to charge more, or if the voltage is high and it needs to charge less or turn off. It's just a control wire, basically. Well, let's take a look at what we've accomplished this week. Uh, I was trying to get the car completely finished and ready to start the engine, and uh, we are really close to that. Um, looks like if there's no problems, maybe we'll be able to start the engine here in a couple of days. I need to get together with the schedule for my... Uh, guy that's tuning the ECU and uh, he'll do that online watching uh, my computer read the instruments and, and tuning as we run the engine getting everything going. I have, uh, I have water in the radiators. I need to mount this. I purchased this for the uh, pressure coming off of the cylinder heads and I uh, bought this cap here that goes where the oil filler cap went and this is to relieve pressure off the heads and this will come down and I'm thinking about mounting this possibly here behind the fender well in this area not quite sure yet I'm looking at that but until that is mounted we won't be able to drive the car I will go ahead and hook it up for us to be able to run the engine here in a day or two I think we're getting close um, I'll know more when we start the engine and see if everything else functions correctly. See if there's any leaks in the fuel system. I haven't been able to check that yet. I have checked to make sure the fuel pump comes on and runs, but I don't have any fuel in the engine, so I haven't actually primed the system and see if everything is tight. There's no leaks. But uh, we're getting very close. Next week is the week that I said I'd hope to run the engine and it looks like that's going to be possible unless there is something that just physically doesn't work correctly. But um, I guess that's going to be about it for this week. And if nothing bad happens, we'll be running the engine next week. And if I can get these little things fixed and there's no engine issues, I will uh, try to get this thing out and drive it up the road and just make sure everything functions like it's supposed to. 
But uh, be sure to check back in next week. It should be an exciting week, and I'll see you guys again in one week.